thing that you have to be able to do is identify your audience's biggest problem, okay? In my case, my audience's biggest problem, for the most part, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak to the audience that comes into Lean on Laurel, just so that we have a very specific problem. Most of the people who come into Lean on Laurel, they sell high ticket, but they have a low budget. That's my audience's, my core audience's biggest problem. You have to be able to identify this, right? Now, here's one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make whenever it comes to creating content. What's the first type of content that most people want to do? Well, most people would want to go how to sell I ticket program using $5 ads, right? But the way that I like to create content, because a lot of people are like, well, why don't you just do a video? How to sell a high ticket using $5 ads? Because there's a whole bunch of micro problems that I have to help people solve before they can even do this. Most of you guys are creating content that is too big for your audience. A fun fact is, and, and I, we learned this from the years of market research and television. For those of you guys who don't know, I have a 20-year television background working for CBS. So a lot of my data comes from actually market research. People only retain 10% of what you say in a video on average, 10%. So if I am doing this big old video, how to sell high ticket $5 ads, and I, I throw all kinds of information at people, they're not going to remember much of anything. And so what we want to do is we want to actually break this problem up into different buckets. Okay. So in order to solve this big problem, and I'm going to share my screen here. Now the fun part is we only have to do this one time, this part right here. Okay. Guys, I'll, some of you guys are familiar with my 15 pieces of content exercise. The first milestone for getting someone to sell high ticket with a small ad budget, there are three different milestones that I have to take people through. Milestone number one is having 15 pieces of content that are building an audience. That is my first goal when people come into my program, okay? But it's a milestone. Notice how I have a ve very measurable milestone. This milestone, is the result of the, of the first pillar of my program, power content, right? But notice how I gave it a very measurable result, having 15 pieces of content that are building an audience. That is the very first thing that I have to get my audience to. The second milestone is getting 100 conversations every single week. That is pillar number two. And then milestone number three, which I didn't actually write in, is the compound effect of being able to automate the entire process, okay? Now, one of the things that we need to do is we then need to break down what are all of the problems or things that we have to help our prospects do along the way in order to achieve this. For instance, if I want my clients to have 15 pieces of content running and building an audience, well, the first thing I have to do is show them this exercise that I'm showing you guys, right? The other thing is I have to teach them how to do a value bomb. The other thing I have to do is I have to teach them the formula to get people's attention in these videos. I have to teach them how to properly do a CTA. And then I have to show them two things that are going to 
lift, lift where they want to be with this piece of content. So there are five things. Now you might have four or you might have three, but you have to be able to identify like what is the journey that I have to take people on in order to help them get that first milestone. I get so many people on power hour calls and they cannot clearly identify the path that they're taking their clients on. This is something that we have to know at all times. Like people always ask me, well, Laurel, this doesn't, this doesn't apply to brick and mortar. Hell yes, it does. You have to figure out one, why should they visit your restaurant? Two, what is the experience that they have when they're in the restaurant? Right? Like if they don't know why they should visit your restaurant, the first pillar is we need to convince them to even consider our restaurant. Phase two is what is the experience once they get to your restaurant? I'll give you guys a great example. There's this local restaurant here in my community. And every time I see this commercial, I'm like, this is so great because it's hitting every objection. The, the, the actual commercial for the restaurant actually has nothing to do with the food at the restaurant. The entire commercial is based upon, hey, you probably see our parking lot super full in the front. Rest assured, once you come into the door, there's 180 seats. Plus, they open the door in the back, there's additional parking. Look at all of this parking. What are they doing? They're hitting an objection that every time someone passes in front of that restaurant, they're like, oh, we can't stop here. They're, they're, they're packed. There was, a, there was a restaurant in Phoenix that we had to convince them that their pizza was the best in downtown. One, why were they the best New York pizza in downtown? Well, they freaking flew their water in from New York. They had a parking lot when other pizza parlors in downtown had no parking lot. And so, hell yes, this framework works for brick and mortar. It works for e-commerce. It works. But we have to know and identify what are the hurdles or milestones that we have to take people through inside the journey from them first seeing us to working with us. And what is that experience along the way? but we have to be able to easily identify those things. These are where we're gonna get all of the ad angles. And then once we have ad angles, we are able to untap into an unlimited amount of variations on those ad angles. And we'll talk about right now how to get these angles, okay? So being able to identify what do these milestones look like? One, for a restaurant, right? Milestone number one, convincing people to come to our place. Milestone number two, getting them in the door. Milestone number three, getting them to come back. So you can see how this could be applied to something as hard as selling a high ticket coaching program or as simple as getting someone to step foot inside a restaurant. Okay. Because most of you guys, when you're creating ads, you're staying very surface level because you're just so afraid to like, you want to withhold all of this fascinating information that you think you have. Honestly, guys, there's not one person in the room that has a unique, that has any unique information that's not already out there. I guarantee it. I don't have anything that's unique. I just did an interview with two of my, my favorite colleagues this morning. None of us have anything that's unique. The only thing that's unique is, is us. We're delivering the content. That's what, that's the only thing that's unique. Our information is not unique. That's where a lot of people get afraid. They're like, Oh, I, someone's going to steal my shit. Good. <laughs> Let someone, I, I would rec, I, like students come to me all the time and they're like, Laurel, is it okay if I, you know, use your thing and I'll totally give you credit. I'm like, hell yeah. Like, I'm not afraid to like give, like, let people use my, my framework. Like, if people, and trust me, students do it, they'll try to knock me off. And I'm just like, cool, have fun. You don't have my audience. That's, that's the one thing that you can't, right? And so that's what, that's what a lot of you guys need to understand that it's not about like that content. It's about like, it's the person they're buying from you, right? So um, Keisha says, I'm actually going way too deep. They aren't ready for what I'm trying to offer because I'm a mindset coach. Mindset coaches, have a really hard time with this exercise 
but you have to figure out like what are the tangible things that people are actually wanting as a result because a lot of mindset coaches use a lot of colorful language that means nothing to a whole bunch of people and so this exercise is actually going to force you to be able to make tangible milestones right a lot of people don't want mindset they don't they don't buy mindset they're going to buy the result that's at the end of the mindset like honestly advertising i work on more people's mindset than i do on ads but what would happen if I like promoted my program as a mindset marketing program? Probably wouldn't sell a lot, right? Because it's not because it's not tangible. So I have to find the tangible things. But at the end of the day, a lot of a lot of what I do is mindset with students. So we have to break the so we have to break these down, right? So for me personally, breaking down my first milestone, 15 pieces of content exercise, right? I gotta teach them the value bomb. Now, once we have this, then we have to come up with all kinds of interesting hooks, okay? And I'll give you guys a cheat sheet on how to actually come up with these, but you can see here, the first part is just coming up with what are the milestones, right? Second part is what are all of the small problems I have to do in order to help solve those milestones? Now, first problem I have to help them get over is they don't have content. So what do I show them how to do? How to create content. Second thing is they don't have a value bomb in order to get to, to get people to raise their hand and increase their engagement on that content. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out all of the different angles that I could take. Each of those little problems are a different angle. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out hooks instead of it being 15 pieces of content exercise, right? That's, that sounds awful, right? But what if I told you how to create 15 pieces of content in five minutes? Becomes a little bit more interesting, right? The second problem I have to solve is a value bomb. People will be like, what the hell is a value bomb? Well, here comes the hook, work this Google doc into your lives to attract more leads, right? That's super sexy. So that's the second thing that we have to do is we have to create the prop we have to create turn the problems into milestones and then turn the milestones into micro problems and then turn those micro problems into sexy hooks and i'm going to give you guys some hook frameworks here in a little bit but right now i just want to kind of stay oh like stay overview and then i'll open it up to some q a so that we could actually we'll workshop this out carlos you have a question Or not? No. Okay. No, no. Sorry, I I misclicked. Sorry. Okay, that's cool. So, what do we do now? Now that we're we're gonna have the hit, the hooks, I'm actually gonna show you guys the process. Okay. So once you write the hooks, we're gonna create some variations. Okay. And I will give you guys this document underneath the replay. Don't worry, you guys will you guys will have this. Um. So. Let's just say this is my this is my my hook that I have, okay? Pulled from my 15 piece of content exercise. This is one of the hooks, okay? The $5 ad that can book at least 5 appointments this week, right? That would be a hook, okay? Now, if I want to pull out another that talks about how to sell people into my coaching program, the $7 offer, check this out. Hook number one, how to result in time frame without doing the thing you hate. This would be a variation on that one hook. How I enrolled 400 students into my program without paying for ads. Hook number two, how to vision of heaven island. How to enroll clients into your program organically. Hook number three, why undesired outcome. Why most membership models struggle to fail. Hook number four, the fastest way to, quote, get rid of undesired outcome, the fastest way to get members into your membership. You see how I'm taking the same, the same, these are all about, these are all the same video. I'm just changing the hook. Same video, just different variations on the same hook angle. Does everyone understand that? Cool. 
I see Clara smiling. So I think her light bulb was like, holy crap, this is, this is right. This is how you can get 10 hooks from one piece, right? But check this out. This is how I took it one step further. Everyone knows Chat GPT. And by the way, I am super stupid when it comes to Chat GPT. So if you guys can do this, I mean, if I can do this, you guys can do this. I don't even do the fancy thing. I'll walk you guys through how I literally turned these hooks into an infinite number of things that I could use, okay? I just literally typed into chat GPT, you are a copywriter who writes some of the best ad hooks in the digital marketing space. You specifically work with consultants who sell high ticket programs. If I give you an ad hook in a framework, can you write some more alternative hooks for me? It said, absolutely. I said, here's the hook. And I gave it the five ads, right? That can book at least five appointments this week. The one that I that I pulled out right here, the $5 ad that can book at least five appointments this week. And I said, here's the framework I would like for you to use to create a new hook. And I did this. Well, what ended up happening was I didn't prompt it the correct way. And it gave me a whole bunch of shit that didn't like had to do with my $5 ads, but it did give me some pretty cool hooks that I can use later for later videos. And so I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> Can you please use that same framework, but use this hook as the base of the content? So I prompted it correctly that time. And then check this out. It says, certainly using the framework, how to result in time frame without thing you hate doing and based it on your original hook, the $5 ad that can book at least five appointments this week. Here are some alternative ad hooks. And it literally gave me eight alternative hooks using the one that I fed it. So now I have, instead of 10 hooks, now I've got 18. And so I was like, that was good. Can you now use the following framework to rewrite my original hook? The framework is the fastest way to get rid of undesired accounts, uh, desired outcomes. So I just went and grabbed the second one and I just told it that was good. Can you now use the following framework to rewrite my original hook? The framework is the fastest way to get rid of undesired outcome. And it was like the fastest way to eliminate empty calendar slots, a $5 ad strategy for five appointments this week. And I said, that's really good. Can you write 10 more hooks based on my original hook and using that framework? And then it gave me 10 more. Guys, I am like chat GPT stupid. And I was able to output this. Like a lot of people would, would, would tell me like to go sell these prompts and go do this. But you guys just see, I told it what I wanted it to do. I gave it my own hooks that I've been using for years and had it, and had it output all of these hooks.